Hello and welcome to the CG Navitronics Avionics Lecture Series. This series is dedicated to working and training engineers on how to certify a product. This particular lecture series is going to cover getting a TSO on an article. We'll go over an introduction and provide you with some of the overviews. But first, our objective here is to understand the purpose of getting a TSO, we review the process, understanding what the level of involvement of the FA is and how that is determined. We'll look at conformity, uh, conformity inspection, the approval process, tool qualification, configuration management, the artifacts needed, and the four stages of involvement with the FAA. But first, what is an FA TSO? For engineers without an aerospace background, a TSO is not something you generally or would ever encounter. Basically, the acronym stands for a technical standard order from the FAA. And what does this artifact entail? This document actually provides you with a minimum performance standard for whatever artifact you design it be it an avionic part, be it a component for installation in an aircraft, the TSO related to that article gives you the minimum required um, for that article to meet in terms of its performance. To begin the process, the part manufacturer sends an application to the FAA to kick up this process. However, prior to that, there's an internal deliberation that needs to be made by the organization as to the feasibility and the practicality of the system being designed. Is there a need for this product? Would this design or would this artifact meet a customer's need? So if you're having an in-house IRAD that's, the, that's intended to be sold as an aftermarket product, there are questions your organization has to go through to make sure that this expense is worth the while. If this is from a customer, you go through the whole validation process from the customer requirements to your organizations, the composition of those requirements to see if that's something that's achievable with the technology that's currently in hand. So what is the certification process? I've had to answer this question quite a few times working with young engineers and sometimes experienced engineers coming in from other domains into the aerospace um, sector. The TSO process actually kicks off from cradle because you need to first define the high level functionality of the article you design in. Now this course is going to be tailored to avionic products so most of the references that we use are going to be reference to avionic components or systems, subsystems, or system of systems. The next thing you're going to look at is the feasibility of the article plan for design, and then you have to do the research and see what applicable TSOs apply to your design. And I've put a link here, and there'll be a link below this video um, for you to search the different TSOs that are available on the FAA website. And for novel products, you have to look at all the similarities because some novel products will actually pull in other designs that are already existent and might be building on that, or it could be something completely novel, and that's something that you would have to do or work with the FAA to accomplish. Now, for this example, imagine we have to design a next-generation satellite system. 
uh, this is a communication system to be used on a civil aircraft um, and to be used both in the flight deck and the passenger domain. This high level need would have to be decomposed and we'll have to review the implication of the system. Next generation satellite systems currently exist, so they are TSOs we can tie to. However, if you do the research, you notice that there are two separate satellite communication systems that are in use in, in the airspace domain and that have a TSO, TSO path. Could that number grow in the future? That's a high possibility. But for this course, the first question that will come to mind once we've done the TSO search to the customer, if this is from a customer, is do you intend to use both systems? If you intend to use both systems, we'll have to look at the minimum performance requirements that the FAA has stated for both the Iridium system and the Inmarsat system. Thank you for listening to CG Navitronics lecture series. We look forward to sharing more knowledge with you. And if you have questions, you can